Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, verses 23 through 28, and I'm going to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Rando Rabashanda Rabasai. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pastor Mike, God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. I love you. Man of God, I'm glad you could tune in tonight in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, amen. Let me pray before I preach. Father, I pray that tonight you would hide me behind the cross. I pray the glory of the Lord would come through these lips. And Father, that your word would be heard and be shown forth with demonstration and power, Father. I pray that your anointing of the Holy Ghost be upon this service. Let the people become not just hearers, but doers of the Word of God. Let them rise up and move out and preach and go forward in victory through the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Jenny, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of people tuning in tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If you've got your Bible, I want to have you turn with me to the book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, verses 23 through 28. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light. Reproofs of instructions are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, lust not after her beauty in thy heart, <laughs> neither let her take thee with her eyelids. You know what the devil does? He bats his eyes at you. Hello there, gorgeous. Come on over here and see me. But you know what? When he gets over there, to, he's a snake with eyelashes. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. He bats his eyelashes. Hey there, sexy. How you doing? Come on over here and see me a minute. And then you get trapped by the spiritual snake, the Jezebel of hell. And before you know it, you've been snake bit and there's spiritual poison in your veins. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. To keep thee from the evil one, woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a horse woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Do you know this, that those that are in spiritual adultery are nothing more than predators after prey. They're looking to prey on the people of God, those that belong to the king. And they're saying, let me see what I can do to entice them and to draw them away. The Bible said that in the latter years of Solomon's life, who wrote the book of Proverbs, by the way, he wrote the book of Proverbs and Solomon, one of the wisest kings throughout the whole Bible who had the knowledge and the wisdom of God. The Bible said at the end of his life, his heart was turned from God because of his wives. And God told him, he said, do not marry outside of yourselves. Do not marry outside 
of your own tribe, out of your own kindred and tongue. He says, stay with the family lineage. Don't don't get out of the the bloodline of the blessed. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He was saying, don't marry anybody that's pagan. He wasn't talking about the color of their skin. He never mentioned skin. There's a problem right there in the church. A lot of pastors will disqualify people because they married somebody of a different race and a different color. And what I mean by race is a, is a different color of skin. But the issue is sin, not skin. Are you hearing me? What God hath joined together, let no man, let no devil put us under. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, my friend? Because Moses was married to an Ethiopian woman. She was a dark-skinned sister, and he was a light-skinned brother. He had olive skin, and she was like blue-black. I mean, she was dark black. Black or African-American, I want to say, because a lot of people say, oh, don't say that word. She was very, very, very dark skinned. And Aaron and the sister of Mo brother Aaron and his sister Miriam had a problem because they were looking at the skin of Moses' wife and saying he married an Ethiopian woman. He married outside of his race. And God struck Miriam and Aaron with leprosy. Obviously, God didn't have a problem with the wife of Moses being a dark-skinned sister. He didn't have a problem with it. They had the problem. That's what a lot of people in the church do. They're racist. They got a problem in their spirit, and they bring it out in their preaching and say, oh, well, a black man shouldn't marry a white woman, or vice versa. But obviously, God had no problem with Moses marrying this darker-skinned sister. So it was sin, not skin, that was the problem. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm just going to put that devil down tonight. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, hallelujah, Father. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. The adulteress is a predator, for by means of a whorish woman is a man brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire into his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? He's like, if you're going to play with fire, you're going to get burned. And guess what he did? He was the wisest man in the Bible, and he put fire to his bosom. He had a my Lord Jesus, he had a fire in his loins and he married some people that God told him not to because they were outside of the faith of God. They were not Jewish. They did not believe in the Lord. They believed in Baal. And he said, I'm going to marry them anyways. They hot. They hot to trot. So he married them. And the Bible says in the latter years of Solomon's life, God was displeased with Solomon because his wives had turned his heart from God. His wives had turned his heart from God. Tina, God bless you, sister. Hallelujah. Amen. So if I can entitle this message anything, last verse, 28 verse, can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? Let me say this. A lot of people are walking with fire. They're playing with fire and they're about to get burned. And I'm going to entitle the message tonight as the Lord has given me, Keep your eyes on your true love. Keep your eyes on your true love. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Remember, for those of you that grew up like I did with parents that watched the older shows and everything, growing up, there was an episode on I Love Lucy where Tennessee Ernie Ford's mother said, stay away from them painted up wicked city women. 
Don't get caught up in lust with them painted up wicked city women. That's what she was talking about. What was she really talking about on the I Love Lucy show? Mama was talking about the spirit of Jezebel. Come on now. Amen. Somebody already got, Sister Tina already got what I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, just like Solomon was saying to keep your eyes on your true love, don't let your eyes be deferred into something dark and into something they shouldn't be into. That's talking about with, with women. But also, God is talking about that for His church. Don't let your eyes wander away from you. Do not let your eyes get off of the Son of God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Remember when Peter was seeing Jesus and he said, if it's you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus said, come on, Peter. And he got out and he started walking on the water. And the Bible said when he turned his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. I don't know what you're facing, what kind of storm you're in, but if you'll just keep your eyes on Jesus, you won't drown. And the Bible said that he began to sink because he took his eyes off of the master. He took his eyes off of Jesus and began to drown. And he lifted up his hand and he said, Jesus, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and pulled him up on the water. But notice this, the water that he could not swim in, he was allowed to walk back to the ship on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because Jesus was walking on the water. And as long as he looked at Jesus, I can just see Jesus and him talking and walking. Jesus is leading him back to the ship. He's got his eyes on Jesus now. I ain't taking my eyes off of you, Lord. Look down, Peter. See all the fish. Uh -uh, I'm going to watch you, Jesus. I ain't going to look down. If I look down, I'm going to drown. I ain't going to look down no more. I mean, he said, I can't swim. Save me, Jesus. And now here's something interesting with y'all that you need to understand with, with, about Peter. The second time Jesus says, come to me, Peter, because Peter said, if it's you, same conversation, same kind of place, same place, actually. Peter said, if it's you, tell me to come to you. First time he sank because he couldn't swim. Second time, the Bible said he swam to the shore and beat everybody there because Jesus was sitting on the shore banks. What was he doing? He was keeping his eyes on Jesus, and because he had his eyes on Jesus, he could do something he couldn't do before. So because he had his eyes on Jesus, he knew how to swim in a situation that he almost drowned in the first time. Glory to God. If you'll learn to keep your eyes on Jesus, you're going to make it all right. Amen. You're going to make it through it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Check this out. Job 31 and 1. Job said, I have made a covenant with mine eyes that I would not sin against the wife of my youth. I made a covenant with my eyes that I would not sin against the wife of my youth. This is an amazing revelation right here, okay? Have you made a covenant with your eyes that you're not going to sin against Jesus? Have you made a covenant with your eyes that says, come hell or high water, I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to keep my eyes on the prize. I'm going to keep my face pointed as a flint, as David said. Hey, man, are y'all hearing me tonight? I know the signal ain't too good, but I know the word is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Job made a covenant with his eyes, Job 31 and 1, that he would not sin against the wife of his youth. Have you made a covenant with your eyes not to sin against Jesus? Have you made a covenant with your eyes to keep your eyes on the prize of glory in heaven? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Somebody's getting blessed tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, check this out. It's not just physical. It is spiritual. Matthew 5 
and 28. If you read it, it says, If your eye offends you, cut it out. It's talking about your spiritual eye. Get rid of what you're seeing because it's better to go to heaven blind than to go to hell with both eyes open. Woo, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the whole thing right there with the eyes and if the hand offends you, he's talking about sexual immorality and um, sexual acts. And I'm not going to even bother to explain that to y'all. You should understand what that means already. If your eye offend you, if your hand offend you, cut it off. For it's better to enter heaven with one hand than to enter hell with both hands. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. This body belongs to God. And what we do in this temple determines... Uh, our act of worship toward God. Because see, even sex is an act of worship before God. That's what the Bible says. That our sex life is actually an act of worship before God. So, are you keeping the marriage bed undefiled? Are you living for the Lord? Are you doing what is pure in his eyes in the bedroom? Are you hearing me? Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. This is going to set some people free tonight. It's going to make some people mad, but it's going to set some people free too. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You see, I love what Jack Coe said one time. He said, um, he said that, his preaching did what Jesus preaching did. He said it did one of three things. It made you mad, sad, or glad. And he said, if I can make you mad, sad, or glad, I've done my job. And that's exactly what I'm saying to you tonight. If I've made you mad, praise God. Get mad, get glad after you get mad. Because if you get mad and realize what you're doing is wrong and you, and you repent, you'll get glad. So you might be mad till you repent, then you'll get glad. Amen. Just praise God. Just don't be sad. And if you are, write to me. Let me pray for you. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hank Williams Sr. once said, Your cheating heart will tell on you. It sure will. Your cheating heart will tell on you. 1 John 2.16 If you got your Bibles, turn on me now to 1 John 2 and 16. This is an anointed message from the Holy Ghost. I'm so glad the Lord gave me this message. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. That's right, and God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm so excited. The revival tent goes up tomorrow, and then the tent revival is Friday. I'm excited. And by the way, I'm not preaching Friday. I'm preaching Saturday. But still come out and support the tent ministry. It's the revival tent for Hour for Revival. So come out and support us. And come expecting in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Keith, God bless you. I love you, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What did I say? First John 2 and 16. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. First John. First John 2 16. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 1 John 2 and 16. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to show you something right here. Some of you are still trapped in your flesh. You're saved. You love God. I'm going to say that one more time because of the squeaky chair. You're saved and you love God, but you're trapped because of the sin you used to be in before you knew it. You ain't never allowed the Lord to kill that flesh. So you're still stuck in the work of the flesh. But if you walk in the ways of the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Are you hearing me? Come on, somebody. I can't be shouting by myself today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Please share this message with everybody y'all can, by the way. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. First John 2 and 16. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For all that is in the world is the lust, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How do I live forever? Abide in God. He said, if, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you will ask whatever you will, and it shall be done. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. So many people find themselves trapped in a trial because they hadn't allowed their soul to live and their flesh to die. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So many are trapped in the trap of adultery, spiritual adultery. You've worshipped other idols. You've put other things before God. There was a friend of mine a long time ago, a prophet of God named Clay Poole. And uh, Clay was not being able to hear from God lately. And he prayed and he said, Lord, why can't I hear from you anymore? And God spoke to Clay and he said, it's that box right there. And it was a TV sitting in front of him in his prayer chamber. And God said, you want to hear from me? Get rid of that. Because it was taking away his time with God. He hollered in the other room. I can't remember his wife's name, but I'm going to call her Sweetie. Sweetie! Open the door! So she opens the door. I sure will, Sister Tina, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Celia, God bless you. Amen. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Cecilia, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Richard, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But like I said, he said, Sweetie, open the door. And she said, why? And she, he said, don't ask any questions. Just open the door. I've, I've heard from God. And she'd been praying for about a month for him to hear from God because he hadn't heard from God. And he wasn't preaching. And it, when he did preach, it would affect his preaching because he wasn't hearing from God like he should. Something was messing with his spiritual connection with the Lord. And he said, honey, open the door. She opened the door. And this brother had wheels on the TV, he rolled it out into the yard and threw it out there and he said, you stay out there as a lawn ornament, I'm going back in to talk to my father. And he, whoo, he walked back in there and he started talking to God and God started talking back to him and they had a wonderful conversation and God used him mighty in the last few years of his life than he had ever been used before. But see, that box, that TV had become his God. It was an idol and he had begun to worship it by watching it and paying no attention to God. He was letting that box rule his life and it was ruling his house. His family, instead of sitting down reading the Bible, they loved God but they would just watch TV instead of praying. Less prayer less power. More prayer, more power. Amen. Evangelist Casey, God bless y'all. Amen. I love you in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Listen to this, though, y'all. There are a lot of people trapped in spiritual adultery. But listen to this. God wants to put a healing salve over your eyes. Revelation 3 and 18. I'm praying that the spiritual cataracts of your soul fall 
like the scales from the eyes of Paul, according to Acts chapter 9 and 18. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You see, God allowed a sandstorm to blind Paul so he could open his eyes. God had... Mm, mm, Jesus. God had to use a sandstorm to blind a man named Saul, who he would later call Paul. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And when he blinded Saul, he opened the eyes of Saul. Because the Bible said that when Ananias came into the room, the Bible says that Ananias said, I'm looking for Saul of Tarsus. The guard said, oh, uh, we can't help you there. And Saul said, wait a minute. He came to me in a vision. Wait a minute. He's blind. How can he see in a vision if he's blind? God showed him through the spiritual world a spiritual sight. So for those days that he did not eat, Shorabakashaya, for the days he did not eat, what God was doing was training him to walk by faith and not by earthly sight. He was training him to walk by spiritual sight. And for those days that he did not eat anything, what was he doing? He was fasting. And he was praying to the God that he was persecuting. Because the Bible said when Jesus came on the scene, he said... Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He didn't say the people were being persecuted. He said, It's me. It's Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Lord Jesus, amen. Why? Because he said, whatever you've done unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it also unto me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. God wants to put a healing salve over your eyes tonight. Revelation 3.18 I'm praying, like I said, that the cataracts of the spirit world fall off of your eyes like they did for Paul. Second Corinthians, I mean, Acts 9.18. Let me say this. The enemy wants you to become spiritually blind. Second Corinthians 4.4, 4, he wants a blinder put over your eyes. But God wants you to see. Luke 4.18. There are those in the church that are blind Leaders, listen to me now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. They are blind leaders, yet they see. Wait a minute. And they're trying to lead you blindly. The blind lead of the blind, they all fall in the ditch. Matthew, 5, uh, Matthew 15 and 14. They are blindly leading the blind. God allowed one of his prophets God allowed one of his prophets to lead blind spiritually and physically. These people that came against Elijah 2 Kings 6, 18-23, they came to arrest Elisha. And he said, Father, or he said, Lord, send a dust storm. And the Bible said a dust storm came and blinded all of them. And like Paul, they couldn't see at all. And 
he said to him, he said, the he he had a Star Trek moment, <laughs> a Star Wars moment. For those of y'all who love Star Wars, I'm a big sci-fi bug. I love Star Trek, Star Wars, and all other sci-fi stuff. Anyways, he said to him, he said to them that was trapped in the blind state, they said, we can't see. And he said, well, the prophet you're seeking is not here, but I'll lead you to him. The one you seek is not here, but I'll lead you to him. And the Bible said that they, the prophet of God led them blindly into the camp of their own enemy and God and Elijah said, Elisha said, Lord, open up their eyes that they may see. Just like he did for the servant when he said, Lord, open his eye, that the eyes of the servant that he might see. And he saw a host of army of heaven behind him, behind the camp of the enemy. And he said, open the eyes that he might see. Same prayer, but for the enemy now, instead of for the saint, it was for the enemy to see. And his, their eyes were open, and when their eyes were open, they were all in the camp of their enemy. And their enemy was going to kill them. And Elisha said, no. He said, make them a table. Hey, Carson, I love you, son. God bless you. Amen. Rachel, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So even in that blind moment, God showed mercy when he opened their eyes. That's what He wants to do to you and me. He wants to show us mercy. We are in a spiritual time. In this time, it's just like the suns. It's just like the sons of Issachar. We are in a time of blindness. But the sons of Issachar knew what time it was. They knew about the healing balm in Gilead. They knew that to get that healing balm, it would cost people their life. But it was a precious balm because it cost you your life. And you had to go up on the highest peak of the mountain with the jagged rocks. And if you came back down alive, the only way the balm could heal your body is if the balm had been crushed. Isn't it interesting that our healer of our soul and the giver of our spiritual sight, Jesus, isn't it interesting that he was praying before he was arrested at Gethsemane, and Gethsemane means the place of crushing. Jesus. It means the place of crushing. For the anointing to be affected, for the gospel to be preached, the anointed one had to be crushed. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Holy Ghost. The anointed one had to be crushed for the kingdom to be built. The anointing of God had to go through a process of pain and crushing. But you know what happens to us? Because the king got crushed for us, all we are is pressed. We're pressed to be blessed. Mm, Jesus. Jesus was crushed to be our cure. And now we're pressed to be blessed. We're pressed, but not crushed. Persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We are blessed beyond the curse. Remember, he who had no sin became sin. He took on the sin for us. Still perfectly spotless before the Father, the Lamb of God, God in flesh, took our sins on Himself. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I'm almost done, y'all. I don't even know how long I've been preaching tonight. Really don't matter. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. As long as somebody got something out of it, it really don't matter how long I've been preaching tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But I'm almost done, y'all. Like the old church say, I'm getting ready to close. Oh, I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> I'm getting ready to close. Hallelujah, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me say this. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. God wants you to see Luke 4.18 there were those in the church, though, that are blind leaders. Matthew fifteen fourteen, But God allowed one of His prophets to lead somebody to a place in their blindness to bring them to a place of understanding who really is God. 2 Kings 6, 18-23, they were not in control. God was. Amen. And is still today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Remember what Scripture tells you about your eyes. Matthew 5.30 Have you ever heard the saying that your eyes are the windows to your soul? The Bible says it is. He said if you look into somebody's eyes that are dark, their whole soul is dark. But if their eye be full of light, then their whole body is full of light. What's in your eyes tells what's in your heart. If you have beautiful eyes, that's a very good indication you've got a beautiful soul and you really love the Lord. But I want to ask you today, are you looking through the eyes of heaven? Are you looking to the one who had his eyes on you? The Bible said, seeing the joy that was set before him, the joy that was to come, that was set before him. He endured the suffering of the cross. What was the joy that was set before him? Not only was it seeing him restored back to the Father in heavenly places with him, but it was also seeing me and you walking down an aisle or even watching this video today and you bowing your head in surrender of your life to Jesus Christ. If that's you, if you're saying, Lord, I'm tired of playing games. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of going in and going out, going here and going there when I know where I need to be is in your presence. If that's you, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. If that was you, write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. Our full revival at yahoo.com. Our full revival at yahoo.com. I want to send you a certificate of sonship in Jesus' name. Send me your address, your, your mailing address and everything like that. I'll send you out. A certificate of sonship. Tina, sister, I stand in agreement right now for that niece that's playing with those crystals. I take authority over the spirit of witchcraft. I bind its power by the blood of the Lamb, and I command it to leave. Father, I thank you for opening up her eyes that she might see in Jesus' name. Let her see and believe who is the true son of the living God. Lord, I, I rebuke the power of those crystals. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I cancel every assignment of witchcraft and the antichrist spirit off of her life. In the name of Jesus, the new age spirit, I take authority over it. By the blood of the lamb, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Panda de Koboshaya. Breda Bahanda Broto Shalahandideki Sarabashanda. In the name of Jesus, I call it done by faith. Amen, amen, and amen. I call that niece to the foot of the cross in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we rebuke every spirit of the new age in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. If you're bound up in your body, if you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness right now. I command a creative miracle from the body part rooms in heaven from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Right now, I declare that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you have been healed in the name of Jesus. Healed and revealed in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for everyone that's received a healing that in your power they might be revealed the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. If you've been bound, I rebuke every spirit of bondage. I curse every devil at the root. I command total healing and total deliverance in your spirit, soul, mind, and your body. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every spirit of addiction. I command every addiction receive an eviction by holy conviction. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over it by the blood of the Lamb. And the Bible says, according to Nahum 1 and 9, the attack cannot come back a second time. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. And the Bible says, we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. The word testimony, or the word testify means say it again. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. It's time we say it again. Go out and testify about what the Lord has done. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Well, glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Tomorrow afternoon, we're putting the tent up in Winder, Georgia. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we're going to be preaching under the revival tent. You need to tune in to that meeting. It'll be live on here, of course, 7.30 every night. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm excited about it. But there's nothing like having a tent meeting in person. Come out and join us. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Our full revival is back again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Do it now, Lord Jesus. Fire. 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 Fire, 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 washing of the water of the word. In Jesus' name, I do that prophetically. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, you can buy a copy of my book if you like to donate to the ministry. Hold on. That in a minute. <laughs> you can actually get a copy of my book, McFerrin, on Amazon or wherever books are sold online. Just go into any bookstore and it's there. And the second book is almost complete. I'm so excited about the second book. It's called As Seen Through the Eyes of the Seer. It's my personal testimony along with a whole list of stuff about prophets. If you have wondered about the prophetic in your own life, you need to get a copy of the book. When it comes out in about two months, it's coming out in two months. Hallelujah, Jesus. As seen through the eyes of the seer. You don't want to miss that book. Thank you, Jesus. And please go out there and get a copy for your family and your friends of McFerrin. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Uh, you can get a copy of Hey K. God bless you. I love you in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can get a copy of the book McFerrin on paperback or if you write to me directly and send me your address and a love gift of any amount. For a love gift of any amount, I will send you out a audio CD of McFerrin that you can listen to in your car for a, a love gift of any amount. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. 
If you got saved, healed, set free, and delivered, write to me. Let me know what God has done for you. Filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hour for revival at yahoo.com. Hour for revival at yahoo.com. Hallelujah. And if you do write to me and let me know that you want to receive a copy of the audio file book, uh, McFerrin, my book on CD or by paper, you can write to me and let me know. You're going to have to order it online for paperback, but for the audio, you can write to me because I, I've owned the copyrights of everything. So it's all ready to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you do desire to give financially, also, you can do PayPal. Go to PayPal, type in Henry Kidd. Or you can type in cash tag hour for revival where it's always the hour for revival. Your love gifts, large or small, keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, not just here, but abroad as well. I love you. God bless you. See you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. Please like, share this video, subscribe, hit the bell notification on YouTube for more videos just like this. But it has been a while since I've offered the first book I ever wrote, McFerrin. Let me tell you something. It's got great pictures for the kiddos. And, like, there are so many people that love it. And they've compared the book to C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. They, they've compared this book several times, as a matter of fact. It's got a memorial page, a special memorial page. It's got beautiful pictures. Very easy read. You can get through it in one day. Maybe two if you really try hard, but uh, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. There's been so many souls led to Jesus after this book had been written. Many souls have come to faith in Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. I love you. God bless you. See you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.